there's always stuff that you can release. I like to think that we're all born almost like um, a lantern. We have this wonderful bright light and we it just gets a little bit sooty and it gets kind of covered. But that anytime you do a practice like TRE, you're just like cleaning off the soot. You're just getting rid of some of that so you can shine brighter and brighter and feel lighter and lighter. You know, it's, it's never too late. And trauma is not a life sentence in any way. I'm Garrett Saulpeter, and I believe that the most powerful and transformative way to help people recover from pain and injury, heal from trauma, and reach their highest levels of fitness and performance is to focus on the nervous system. In this podcast, we'll share knowledge from the frontiers of neuroscience and inspirational stories of how applying that knowledge has empowered people from all walks of life to heal, adapt, and grow. Hello, New Fit Nation. Welcome back to the Undercurrent Podcast. I'm joined today by my guest and old friend, Carolyn Barnwell. Not that she's old, but that I've known her for a long time because we actually went to college together and then she went off and had an amazing first career as a documentary filmmaker, and we'll let her you know, tell you a little bit about that. Uh, and then we reconnected fairly recently because she's doing some work related to the nervous system and helping people recover from trauma. And it's you know very related to what we're doing at NewFit. So it's been awesome to reconnect with her, learn about her work. And I'm so excited to have her on today to share these techniques and this framework with you because it's so relevant to what we're doing here in NewFit Nation and helping people recover from chronic pain and injury and trauma and all those things here. So I'm really excited to dive in. Carolyn, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Garrett. It's great to reconnect with you and to connect with your community. Yes, yes. Thank you for being here. And uh, can you tell everyone just before we get to the work that you're doing now, can you tell everyone a little bit about the type of work you were doing in the, the first, you know, the, the documentary filmmaking stage of your career? Absolutely. And it's the reason why I've gotten into everything that I've gotten into with the nervous system because of my personal experience working on my first film. I had taught myself how to edit uh, in our college library, actually, and I was really feeling passionate about storytelling and my ethnographic research methods class and like the anthropology department was the thing that sort of got me going on that path. But I ended up really diving in deep and was working with uh, commercial sex workers, essentially sex slaves and, and people who were in really, really difficult situations, dying of AIDS, you know, in Thailand. And so having that kind of immersive experience as a young, optimistic, you know, American coming from a lovely life in Vermont, um, I was, I was like shell shocked, you know, it was so much to process. I didn't know how to process it. When I got home, I didn't really want to talk about it. I was trying to understand how I could possibly stay in this field and do humanitarian and conservation documentary filmmaking if I didn't know how to handle what I was witnessing. And so I started exploring different kinds of like alternative energy healing techniques like somatic exercises, things where I was really body focused versus like psychological or, or mind focused in terms of processing. And so that that's what helped me learn about neuroplasticity. And that felt like a light at the end of the tunnel, like this idea that no matter what circumstances are going on outside of you, whether you're witnessing something or experiencing something yourself, like you can't control everything, but you can actually change how your brain and nervous system respond to things. So once I learned that, I became sort of obsessed <laughs> with trying to figure out what was going to work for me so that I could stay in the documentary field. And that is when I discovered TRE. So 18 years ago, I discovered, you know, this particular method that stands for tension and trauma releasing exercises and started using it um, myself. So. And what was your first experience with it then just to continue down this train of thought a little bit? Yeah, you know, I was going to see a therapist and I specifically remember having a day where we were talking about stuff that happened in Thailand and I was like, you know, recalling things and it just felt so hard. And I said, you know what? I don't want to talk about it anymore. There's got to be something else I can do 
she was, she said, ah, yes, let me teach you TRE. This will be really supportive for you. Because when you think about having to process things as a human being, you can take that top down approach and really, you know, work with the mind, or you can take the bottom up approach and work with the body first. And so it was a perfect balance to the kind of support that I was getting. And I didn't really know what to expect. I was a little bit nervous. I, I think the biggest thing for most people when they're first trying it, and it was definitely my experience was, okay, if I'm about to, to try something that is body led, and I'm not necessarily controlling it with my thinking mind, does that mean that I'm not going to be able to stop it? if I want to. And that's definitely not the case. (laughs) So it's the sort of thing where you can like take a break anytime you can, you can just stop it if you want to. And so that means you get to go at your own pace. Um, it's, it's unlike, you know, if you were doing psychedelic assisted therapy or something where you took a psychedelic and you had to just ride it out because your body was processing it. It's not like that at all. It's like you get to start and stop um, the tremoring process that's activated through TRE. And so that's what happened for my first time, right? I was able to, to like dip in, dip out, like just take it at my own pace, explore it a little bit. And I physically felt lighter and felt better in a way that I hadn't from any of the other kinds of, you know, talk therapy that I was doing. So after that first experience, I was like, okay, there's really something here. I'm totally going to run with this. And to be honest, I did it privately. I did it privately forever. I didn't tell anyone. It's kind of weird. (laughs) It looks weird. And so, um, I was just using it, you know, all over the world in hotel rooms, in airports, just using it to just keep processing through everything that I was doing, like this high stress level of being on a production timeline, being on set, you know, traveling in dangerous places. So I just was using it constantly. And then in 2020, when the first lockdown happened um, due due to the COVID pandemic, I was using it a lot personally, and it was so helpful. And I felt so good. It sounds weird, but I was like thriving, having a little bit more, you know, alone time at home and having a little bit of slower pace of life and, um, doing a lot of TRE. And when I would see my friends outside, they all asked me, what are you doing? Cause you're doing really well. And we're all freaking out. And I thought, you know what, it's time I need to get certified so I can actually teach this and share this to other people because it's made such a big difference in my life. That's awesome. And I know we're we're going into the TRE work here, so we, we won't talk you know too much about your career. But you know, I mean, you were a producer with National Geographic, did some really incredible work there. So uh, it was it was cool. And I, I I love that story where you're talking about your conversation with your therapist, and you know I, I don't want to talk about it anymore. And it's great that that person had an alternative because I think that's you know you can only get so far talking about it if something is you know truly trapped in your body so that's that's uh, i love the way you described that and then you talked about that that apprehension someone might have of of wondering if they can stop it right once you start the process so so what what exactly is a very leading question of course what exactly is the process and what is it that one might be concerned that they're not able to stop Yeah. Well, you know, before I tell you about the process, I'm just going to back up to explain the context of like where it came from and what it is. So I think people will get it better. So um, Dr. David Burselli was working um, for 20 years in, I guess you could say conflict zones, you know, Israel, Palestine, Lebanon, Sudan, you know, places where there was a lot of war, poverty, and was helping um, to design programs for institutions to help with uh, processing trauma. And he kept noticing the same thing in every country with all body types across all ages, that when people got really stressed or anxious or something happened, like there was a bombing or a shooting, people would shake. 
And so that natural mechanism to start shaking or tremoring in this case is a way that the body is trying to help you process and metabolize through all of those like stress chemicals that are getting discharged in the nervous system and in the body. And so he started thinking about how you can artificially activate some of the other neuro neurophysiological releases that we do as humans crying or laughing, right? You could go to a comedy show and like start laughing, or you could watch a really sappy movie and like have a cry, <laughs> like, you know? Um, and so he was like, I wonder if we could artificially create the tremoring so people could have that physiological release. And he was able to develop TRE, which is simply like the seven exercises that can lead anyone to activate this natural tremor mechanism so that you can shake. And, you know, the shaking doesn't always have to be associated with some really stressful or traumatic event. I mean, many people, mostly men, uh, probably shake a little bit when they get down on one knee to propose, or maybe you shake before public speaking or something like that, right? It's just an indication that your nervous system is in like overstimulation mode. And so doing the tremoring helps you down regulate and come back into a really balanced uh, homeostasis, right? A state where you can actually rest and relax and recharge. And so there's also, there's also these examples too, and that's a beautiful one of talking about people in combat zones. Also in the animal kingdom, you know, there's this famous example of like when a gazelle escapes from a lion, if it's being chased and it is fortunate enough to get away, you know, it, it has a tremoring response to shake off the the you know the stress that it just endured in running for its life too. There's like there's examples of this in the wild as well, right? Absolutely. Even, you know, a dog hearing fireworks on 4th of July or going to the vet often is tremoring, right? So that's a way that a lot of people have seen it in nature. And I want to underscore that, you know, this is something available in every single mammal. You know, this isn't some weird thing that humans have figured out. It's actually available to every mammal, but this is a way that you can use it at will on purpose to help your body come back into balance. Awesome. So it's literally shaking it off. Yes. Literally shaking it off. Okay. Uh, and so that, when, when you talk about, you know, people being concerned that once it starts, they may not be able to stop or get out. It's the, the actual physical tremoring is the part that might, might be intimidating to people, right? Yeah. I think a lot of people have felt it before. Maybe if they were in a mild car accident and then they felt really shaky, just like trying to hand their license to the police officer or get out of the car, you know, that kind of a thing. But um, the therapeutic quality comes in if you do it, you know, for 10, 15 minutes straight. And so that's the difference. And and uh, you can practice getting into it by just doing it, you know, for two minutes, three minutes, see how it feels, really start paving those neural pathways. And if that feels like enough, then you just take a break, you know, you can work your way up to it. And it, it's to the point where, you know, the official suggestion is to do it a couple times a week for like 15 minutes to really maintain um, your your optimal state where you're giving yourself a chance to downregulate, you're allowing your muscles to really release deep held tension patterns. So that can help with flexibility and mobility and recovery from injury and, and all sorts of things. You know, it doesn't have to do with any particular story. It's almost like a good way to maintain your nervous system. I love that. So there, uh, I, I want to get into the how in terms of how, how you actually, you know, stimulate this to happen within people. But before we do that, I, I have a little bit of a, you know, a conceptual question. This may, may, there may not be anyone like this in the real world, but hypothetically, if someone had no trauma, had either never experienced anything traumatic or had quote unquote cleared everything, which I don't know if there's a single person who meets that definition, but would, would one still be able to tremor? In other words, is there some sort of built up reservoir of prior stress or, or trauma, whether severe or mild that's required to trigger this? Or is this something that, you know, can just happen in anybody at any time, you know, regardless of that, what, 
and I, I don't know if I'm even phrasing the, the question. I hope, hopefully it gets across, but I'm just curious, you know, how specific that relationship is between the opportunity for one to have these tremors in their nervous system and release, you know, the relationship between that and prior experiences of stress or trauma. Yeah. So the answer is yes. And because I do not believe there is any single human being in the world that doesn't have some kind of trauma. And even if you don't relate to that word, I just want to define that as when you enter a nervous system state that is overstimulating, right? Too much, too soon, too big, you know? And so for different people, that can happen from different things. And oftentimes we don't even realize, right? Because maybe some things happened in our childhood and we don't even have memories of them, but there is stress stored somewhere deep in our bodies because of the experience that we had. Like maybe, you know, we were worried when our parent was sick and in the hospital and we never fully processed that, you know, as an example. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you experienced a particular, you know, horrific event like a rape, you know, everyone has trauma just because it's stored stress, like survival energy. And we also can inherit this. There's ancestral trauma as well. So not that anyone's doomed. It just means like there's always stuff that you can release. I like to think that we're all born almost like um, a lantern. We have this wonderful, bright light and we it just gets a little bit sooty and it gets kind of covered. But that anytime you do a practice like TRE, you're just like cleaning off the soot. You're just getting rid of some of that so you can shine brighter and brighter and feel lighter and lighter. You know, it's it's never too late. And trauma is not a life sentence in any way. Thank you so much for listening to the Undercurrent podcast. If you're interested in learning more about how NewFit and the Newbie can impact your life, please visit our website at www.new.fit. That's N-E-U dot F-I-T so you can learn more about how it might integrate into your professional practice, how you can use it as a patient, and you can also connect with our team there. So TRE can help um, with severe cases like PTSD and, and uh, especially if something has just happened to you, it's really great to use tremoring to try to discharge that right away. Um, but it's also, like I said, it's never too late, you know, to just be releasing the backlog. And so even if it's just stress from relationship changes, work changes, financial stress, you know, those, those can be called little T traumas or soft traumas. And that's just about what's stored in your body. Yeah. So, you know, in the term, in the case of someone who has really severe big T traumas, you know, it's good to do that in conjunction with a therapist, you know, a trauma therapist, a psychotherapist, you know, other kinds of support, because it might be a lot and you need to wade in a little slowly, but using tremoring, if you feel like, you know, your, your life is under control, you just want to use it for maintenance and stress release and athletic mobility. It's like a very safe, effective and wonderful tool. And a lot of people call it, you know, a self-help tool or something that you can do on your own um, on a regular basis, almost as like part of a daily routine if you wanted to. Yeah, I, I like that. There's there's so many things that, that come up there. I mean, one is this notion that, that, you know, we talk a lot about in our trainings of how as humans, we have these hardwired protective responses. You know, if something was flying at me, I would naturally, if you, if you're just listening, you don't see me, but I'm, I'm bringing my arms as if I was in a baseball stadium and there's a foul ball or a baseball bat flying towards me. I'm bringing my arms in front of my face and my chest and abdomen to protect my more vulnerable parts. You know, use the bones of my arms to protect these other soft and squishy and more, more vulnerable areas. And there's this, you know, this hardwired pattern. And even if something is not coming at us physically, but if something feels like it's coming at us, psychologically, we'll actually adopt some of those same patterns of tension of turning inward to protect ourselves, build a little bit of a shell. And 
those patterns of tension, then it's a, it's a two way street between the brain and the body. If the you know there it could be a nice pleasant day where there's nothing to worry about, and the brain could could come online. You wake up in the morning and it could say, oh yeah, you know yeah da 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 da. It's a it's a beautiful day, nothing to worry about. Oh wait, the, there's tension here in the body. Oh wait, there must be something. There must be a reason for concern. And so it's not just the brain telling the body what to do, but it's also the brain paying attention to the the patterns of tension in the body and those informing the, the brain here. So if you can shake away those patterns of tension or or reduce those patterns of tension, then there's less of that signal going up to the brain, telling the brain that there's a reason to be stressed. So it's, uh, I mean- Exactly. That. I'm so glad you said that because I don't think a lot of people, especially in the United States, like in our culture, really understand that 80% of the information in the nervous system is going from the body to the brain. It's just 20% from the brain to the body because we all think that, you know, the mind is the most important thing and the mind is controlling everything, but it's actually not true. You know, there's a lot more information, electrical signaling going on in the body. And so that's why something like tremoring works so well, because you don't have to think about it. You're letting the body lead and trusting that intelligence in the body and in the nervous system to release the tension patterns. And so that kind of goes back to you were asking, well, like, how does it work? So there are seven exercises that you do to work, you know, from the bottom of the body up. So you're stretching and fatiguing the muscles in the legs and getting into the hip flexors and some of these muscles that hold the chronic tension of when you are bracing yourself, whether you realize it or not, um, really can unwind when you lie down and you passively allow them to release for you. So it will just start usually in the psoas and then it will move throughout the body. And so further and further, you know, tightness, fascial tension, deep muscle tension will just start releasing and releasing as you allow it to move throughout the body. And for most people that I've observed and myself included, it really starts in the lower body for most people. And it's, moving and it kind of feels like vibrating or tingling and and you feel the energy moving around in your low body and then as you relax into it more and you know you've opened up these new neural pathways and you allow it to move then it will start traveling through the myofascial lines up the spine and so your whole body will start vibrating even like pulsating at this point because i've done it for 18 years when i activate my tremor mechanism it almost looks like i'm i'm kind of like wiggling or, or rocking or even almost like um picture a snake the way a snake moves it's like my whole body just starts kind of moving from side to side as as things are releasing and it's super super relaxing you know for other people especially if they've had acute uh, injuries or physical traumas, the tremor can be really noticeable, like flopping around like a fish out of water. Yeah. And it's uh, interesting. You know, a lot of people listening to this will have had the experience. We, we do these, these exercises called ERAs, end range activation. So you might be pulling down into the bottom of a lunge position or a push-up position, holding it for several minutes. And at, at some point, there might be a shaking that happens because you have, you know, certain motor units and the muscles are getting fatigued. And so the, the brain and nervous system switch among motor units. And as they, you know, as fewer are online, because more of them are fatigued and needing to recover, you kind of switch around. And so there's a little bit of, a little bit of shaking in there. And that there is some overlap in what you're doing, but it's also different and distinct because that's that one uh, at least in my experience, had been one where it's sort of, you know, when the exercise stops, you it sort of stops. Whereas these, you sort of pre-fatigue and then you, and I, I got to go through an experience. You guided me through remotely from Vermont. I, I did it in my living room here in Texas. And I got to, got to try it out, but uh, it's, this, this is a little bit, a little bit different. I want to draw that distinction too, where you do use the fatigue of exercise to help stimulate it, but it's one where Instead of what I'm describing, where you start sort of your muscles are shaking under fatigue, and then when the exercise stops, it, the shaking goes away. This is they start a little bit, but then 
you relax and then you get into a place where they sort of take over and come online after you're done. So it's sort of a different order of the, the just fatigue induced exercise, you know, muscle shake that some people might feel in a Pilates class or that we feel in these exercises or things like that too. So it's a little bit of a distinction there, right? Yeah, that's a great distinction. And if we want to get a little, you know, scientific about it, that the tremor at the gym or when you're working out is a postural tremor. And so that's like a momentary thing and your your muscles are releasing and that's great. But when you're activating in TRE, it is the neurogenic tremor. And that is not just releasing the tension that you've built up in the muscle in that moment, but it's releasing from the past and, and what has been stored for possibly your whole life. Awesome. So that's good. Good. You put some terminology there to the concept that I was attempting to describe here. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, so we talked a little bit about the exercises there and in terms of how it works, you are able to guide people. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, like doing it in person versus virtually because you were able to guide me through it virtually. I, I was so intrigued. I, I hired you to take me through a session, right? I'm, I'm, I love learning and about what's out there, especially involving the nervous system and you know re recovery and healing and all these different themes that we talk about. Right? Um, you know, the difference between or you know, the dynamics working in person versus virtually and sort of what the you know what it what it looks like to to guide people through this. Yeah, definitely. Well, as I mentioned, I did my certification in 2020, so no one was doing in-person anything. And so I got very used to working with people one-on-one -on -one or in, in small groups uh, virtually. And so what happens is I just have to make sure that people angle their camera in such a way that I can see their whole body. And so the thing about TRE is that it is something you could just watch a YouTube video and try it at home, but you're not going to know um, how your body is going to react. And one of the things that's so wonderful about doing it with a provider your first couple of times is that they're able to watch you and see if you're able to self-regulate, to help point out what are, is happening in your body to help you move the tremor into different places and to hold that safe space and to totally normalize whatever is happening. It's kind of like, I remember I had a doula um, when I was giving birth and it really helped not only me, but my husband feel like there was someone there who had witnessed birth hundreds and hundreds of times. And so their nervous system was completely calm and it was easier to co-regulate to her. And it's the same idea when you're working with a TRE provider, whether it's virtual or in person, you're able to co-regulate to them and how they're speaking to you and how they're guiding you and how they're totally calm. And so even if you get a little bit nervous because you're new to tremoring, I, I hope that was your experience that it's easy to just reconnect to the person who's holding that space for you. And I I really love in person because it means I also can do uh, hands on adjustments and help, you know, move certain parts of the body and guide people in that way as well. And I do a lot of classes and workshops where I have, you know, 12, about 12 people. I try to keep it to 12 <laughs> because I really like to be able to go around and check in with each person individually and do hands-on adjustments. But, you know, it certainly can be done with lots and lots of people. I know the founder of TRE who I mentioned, David Berselli, often will go somewhere, you know, after an earthquake or after something happens and just lead TRE for hundreds of people so everybody can just shake off whatever experience just happened. That's awesome. That's a tremendous service to the world there. Um, can on that topic of you know going going to a combat zone or going someplace after a, a you know, natural disaster or something like that, what what are some of the other use cases? I know we've hinted on you know different ones here. You talked about your experience, you know, with the trauma of dealing with people who were like you know being sex trafficked and I mean you know these kind of horrific situations. You know, you mentioned a little bit about chronic pain. You know, what what is sort of the breadth or some of the op optimal use cases of this type of approach? 
Yeah. Well, I, I mentioned that it can be the full spectrum of, you know, an everyday person who just wants to release like the chronic tension that they're holding because of work or family or whatever's going on in their life to someone like a combat veteran who's working through um, post-traumatic stress, like symptoms. And some of the people that I've worked with, it's been so inspiring and wonderful to watch because, you know, they're athletes, they're first responders, they're veterans, they're people who've been really hard on their bodies and they still want to be in really good shape and they're, you know, high performers and they like pushing themselves. But the key thing that I see all the time is they're not down regulating enough, right? It's like they're working on building their muscles up, but they're not necessarily maintaining muscle tone if they're just working on like the tightness or the hardness or the bigness. And so activating the tremor mechanism also helps them maintain muscle tone and flexibility. So they have like that softness and that release that's happening. So they don't lose what they're building, you know, through their athletic or their like professional pursuits that have to do with their body. But they are able to be flexible and, and soft as well. And so I love seeing that because I also have been seeing a lot that it helps people who are doing physical therapy have really complete recovery. So it's like maybe they're getting like 95% of the way there by doing physical therapy, but then by allowing their body to tremor and like work out those deeper fascial like tension patterns, they're like getting to that hundred percent where like, ah, their shoulders back. They never believed it was possible. You know, it's so good. And, and I have to just share because, oh, it might make me cry. I've been working with this one combat veteran this year. And she said that doing tremoring and feeling physically lighter has helped her, her like herself better. And it's like, I mean, how does it get better than that? That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, I, I think there is, you know, tremendous everything from the extreme PTSD to, yeah, just having the difficulty keeping up with the stresses and challenges of daily life. You know, especially in our modern society. Yes. Everyone has a everyone has a version of that too, and uh, this can be yeah can be helpful. I'll I will share a little bit about my experience. So we did. You know, as you described, some of these exercises, you know, uh, calf raises and some lunges, lunges and holding a, a wall sit for several minutes, wall squat for several minutes, and, uh, you know, got fatigued. And then you guided me through this experience where, you know, I got down on the floor and I did sort of, as I relaxed into it, I got these, I, I also admit I was going into it skeptical, you know, I was like, I don't, you know, I, I think it's, you know, maybe, I don't know if it's a parlor trick or maybe you got to do it several times or I don't know. But I, you know, I don't know. I doubt that my body is going to start shaking, you know, like, you know, uh, doing this the first time. But it, it, uh, it definitely did. I had some, some of these, you know, kind of sense of vibration and actual, uh, I would say, yeah, tremors happen. And, you know, it wasn't like, violent but didn't feel seizure like or ever out of control as as you said you know i've never felt i always felt like yeah i could just stop but the way that you guided me through it i did have some of that and you know, some of that experience of tremoring and you know some movements happening in my body and it, one thing that was interesting is that it kept sort of pulling me over to the right side you know something that we talked about so it sort of picked up some asymmetry and in, in how i how i've been holding and protecting and bracing etc uh, which was which was very interesting, uh, and then and then you know it was ended up being a, a an experience an, analogous to you know an intense workout and sort of feeling that sense of you know euphoria endorphin like you know uh, afterwards. And I also you know later that day and the next day too, I would say I felt like recharged and clear, and uh, felt good. You know as yeah as if I had had a great workout or a really solid like long meditation session I've, you know, I've done a couple times i've done a meditation session you know see if i can do it for a full hour and sort of the rest of the day it's just like uh, you know nothing really bothers me you know uh and i so i felt that way after this session too in a, in a in a good way you know in a very good way so it's something that i i i do think is worth sharing you know i was very enthusiastic to to 
have you on to do this podcast episode to share it with people because I think that it's something that I didn't know about until we met. So I'm, I'm glad we can share it. And uh, I, I, I hope people will, you know, those who are interested will, will dive in, learn a little more about it. And in terms of in terms of that, what's the you know the best place to find you and your work, Carolyn? Oh, thanks for sharing all that. It's great to hear that you felt like clear and recharged because that's the reason I've been doing it for so long. That is so great. Yeah. Um, well, I came up with a, a pretty simple business name so that people could easily remember it. It is Shake Away Stress. So my website is shakeawaystress.com. And I'm also uh, on LinkedIn, on Instagram as Carolyn Barnwell. And I, yeah, would love to work with anyone who's interested. It's the sort of thing where, you know, if you do four to six sessions, you'll have a practice for life. You'll really unlock something that you can use anywhere, anytime, no equipment needed. It's one of the reasons why I love teaching it so much because I think it is truly empowering. So if, if a physical therapist was listening to this and was intrigued and they were like, oh, I want to do a session with Carolyn and they, they had an experience that, you know, could, could they then get certified and do it with their own patients or like, I mean, if they. Yeah. You know, I think at this point there are probably about 5,000 certified providers in the world and growing. And, you know, we all hope that within 10 years, it'll be as well known as yoga. And there are uh, virtual like certification programs. There are I think it's in like 70 countries. So whether you prefer in person, it's definitely worth looking. And the official TRE website is traumaprevention.com. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for that. And shakeawaystress.com. Uh, if, if anyone listening wants to try out a session, uh, Carolyn, I, I had a very positive experience doing it, doing it uh, with you virtually there. So I certainly would encourage anyone who, who feels so inclined to try it out and uh this was this was great let's see i'm trying to think is there anything anything more that you feel like we need to need to share so we complete the discussion on tre at least you know over from an overview perspective right yeah um i can't think of anything else i feel like that was great we gave people a little taste of you know where it came from and what it can do and hearing your experience as a first timer probably really helps people feel more comfortable and intrigued and yeah i will just end by saying like even though i've done it for so long it's different every time and that's what makes it so amazing it actually changes your relationship to your body because we're so used to always trying to control everything right we have to think about how fast we're walking to our car and if we're doing a squat or if we're doing a push-up and what we're going to say to someone it's like we're thinking and thinking and thinking all the time so it's such an amazing way to just stop thinking and to just trust and let your body lead and then just see what it wants to do for you that was beautiful. There was something more to say. See, <laughs> that, was, that was, yes, beautiful, beautiful way to, uh, to close the conversation there. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, really appreciate you, the, you know, the, the work you've been doing, you sharing your story, sharing this work with me and, and with everyone here listening to the podcast. And thank you everybody for tuning in to this episode of the undercurrent. Please like subscribe, you know, all, all those things. And we will see you on the next episode. 